Welcome everyone. It's Git Credentials Binding Project. Uh, this is the, oops, 14th of, uh, 14th of Ju July. Uh, it's 7.30 a.m. India Standard Time. So topics we see, Harshit had some questions. I, th I can describe some of the results of my interactive testing and uh, then code review results and open questions. Any other topics? Okay, then let's go ahead. Let's get started. So Harsha, you had the question about which OS environments has the git username password binding been tested on. So the controller has been tested on Linux uh, running in a Docker container. Um, it's easy for me to test, easy to add Linux running on uh, Debian 10, if that will help. I have one of those, it runs and I'll, I'll be putting it there very soon anyway, I just haven't done it yet. Uh, then in terms of agents, uh, it's been tested on CentOS 7, CentOS 8, uh, Debian 9, Debian 10, Debian testing, which is a pre-release of Debian 11. Uh, it's been tested on Ubuntu 18.04, Ubuntu uh, 20.04, Ubuntu 21. I don't remember if that's 04 or 21 something or other, but 20, definitely 21. It's been tested on OpenBSD 6.9, uh, FreeBSD 12.2. So that's, uh, let's talk about those agent operating systems. Then if we talk about agent hardware, it's been tested on AMD 64, ARM 64, uh, System 390 mainframe. So that's a, an IBM mainframe class piece of equipment. And I think, I don't think I've yet tested on PowerPC 64 LE. Uh, oh, it's also been tested on ARM 32. So um, a 32 bit arm on a Raspberry Pi. These are 64-bit uh, arm at uh, AWS and Oracle Cloud. So does that answer your question, um, Harshit, in terms of where we've been run and where tests have run. Yeah. Uh, any concerns there? Any any worry about, oh, hey, what are we missing? See, I should probably double check. I may have understated something there. Just a minute. Let's do one more check. So uh, if we look at the agent, so we mentioned FreeBS. Oh, Windows. I didn't mention Windows. Oops. Sorry, Windows 10. And now, so Arch 60, yeah, ARM 64, FreeBSD 12, CentOS 7, 8, 10, 9, Ubuntu 18, 20, and 21, FreeBSD, Windows, S390. Oh, I think it's offline right now because it had a DNS resolution problem that I need to check. Windows, that is Ubuntu 18 on ARM. 
these are ARM 64. Oh, oh, Oracle Linux, right? Oops, shame on me, missed another one. Okay, sorry. Oracle Linux 8. That's 8.4. Oh, open Susie, right? Sorry, one more. And I think that's 15.2, but let's double check just a minute. 15.2, yes. Okay. Yeah. So does does that does that address were there specific concerns you had Harshit or worries? one of the so maybe we should highlight a different a different question which is which os environments have not been deeply tested well tested and and the one that is most of concern to me is controller uh windows right because there are things that happen only on the controller and i haven't done an awful i haven't done any testing of the code running on a windows controller now well, i believe uh yeah go ahead windows controller i mean i've tested the binding mostly on the windows controller so i think it's okay from my side Great. Okay. Um, one of the con concerns for, well, yeah. So very good. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Harshit, you had a concern with the SE Linux, right? Security and sent to us distribution. Mm, yeah. Sent to us. But Mark says if it's running well on CentOS 7, then I guess it, the SL links might not be an issue with the binding. Well, the I would I would phrase it differently. SE Linux is an interesting interesting concept because what that is is that's CentOS red let's call it Red Hat uh, or Oracle Linux uh, configured with SE. Linux, and the answer there is um, it's known to not. The plugin itself is known to not run well on SE Linux. So there isn't much, there isn't much that I can, we can offer there. We've got, um, we've got an open, we've got a one or two pull requests from I forget who from one of the a, a major Jenkins contributor, um, but dev work uh, in progress to improve the plugin on SE Linux, but it's it's very much in progress, and I don't actually intend to install or configure SE Linux because I don't have use for it, and I don't know. Well, I know that in the last 15 years, there haven't been that many users using it because if there had been, there would have been an awful lot of complaining. Okay. Let's just... So for me, I'd propose we intentionally, we accept that this needs to be tested um, by those who use SE Linux. Because I, I am not a, a credible uh, tester of it. I I would not know, I would not know how to detect pass or fail of many things. So, um, so do you propose that we um, we release it and then see if uh, yes. we're seeing issues with okay. Yeah. So, for instance, I can give you other examples of things where we, places where we haven't run it. We haven't run on it, run it on and um, let's see. So we haven't run it on a uh, 
on PowerPC or on HPs, HPEs, um, what do they call it? Uh, fault resilient Linux, and I forget the name of it, or fault resilient uh, Unix clone. How embarrassing. What is the name of that operating system? Nonstop. There we go. I knew I would remember it. Thanks to Google. HP's nonstop. I know we've got a user, one at least one user, Randall Becker, who works on that kind of equipment, but I, I have no access to it. And there are others like that where, hey, if we don't have access, we can't test it. Uh, can we safely assume that hardware is not going to create an issue for our particular binding? I, I think we, I think even if we couldn't safely assume it, uh, we have to assume it because uh, without, without access to the hardware, there's no way to test it. As far as I've seen, um, I had never tested these HPE nonstop servers uh, and had not tested PowerPC until like 18 months ago, but had never tested nonstop and it works just great for Randall. So, so Java is surprisingly portable across platforms without us doing a lot of work. So Harsh, any other concerns there or worries that we need to be sure we address? No, I don't think of any now. Uh, it seems fine for now, I guess. Okay. Yeah, my, my concern was, we'll talk about mine in, in test results. Mine was not so much with platforms or operating systems. Those, those are working great. It's cases where users may make a, a, a configuration mistake and the configuration mistake causes the, the code to not behave well and, and not necessarily to give a, a, a warning message to tell them what, happened, what, they, what mistake they made. But we'll get there. So after next question that was after where where do we put the the, the documentation right so here's let's look at the current documentation so right i was assuming it would go in the section under pipelines and talk about pipelines and then another section probably i would guess right after pipelines, a top level section preceding configuration that says um, using, Git credential, using Git credentials binding. Now, and you were thinking after the configuration section, that would be fine as well, probably even better. So instead of putting it there, Harshit, your thinking was put it right before this extension section. And that, that would be just great as well. For me, I wanted it in the pipeline section in addition, just because I think that it's a, it's a great addition to pipelines. I know it's more than pipelines. You can also use it with freestyle and I've confirmed it works great with freestyle, but I like it with pipelines because we talk about pipelines in the documentation. We talk about multi-branch and then we add one more section here on using Git, advanced Git functionality with our Git credentials binding for advanced functionality in pipelines. And then we give some good examples there of, hey, maybe you wanna do submodule update, or maybe you need to do this special type of clone, or you need to do this additional thing, and you need to apply a tag and push it. Here's how you do it.
So Harshit, what do you think? Does that make sense to you or what would you prefer? Okay, that is also fine. Oh, so, but we have to explain a bit about what is credential binding in the pipeline section also. Yes, right. Let's, well, and actually, I just, maybe we should, let's take a look for just a minute because these common tasks, I just closed several uh, bug reports specifically saying, we're not going to fix this bug, re this request because credentials binding will do a better job of it anyway. But just a minute, let me see if I can find those. Status in closed. Okay, updated here. Ah, yes, okay, good. So here are some examples. So Jenkins 38860 asks for hey, the Git plugin is doing strange things with submodules. And that is, that is absolutely the truth. It is. It does, what it does with submodules, I think is, is flawed and a mistake. It doesn't handle submodules with spaces in it. Somebody else asked for, hey, I'd like to use the ability, have the ability to clone with the shallow sense option. Yep, agreed. That's a great idea. I'd like to use first parent in the git log command. Yep, those are all great, uh, great choices. And so each of those I think are good excuses to put in the documentation saying, hey, use, use these things. See Jenkins 38072. for an example. Oh, no, no, 38860. Um, Harshu could, uh, could also potentially use these uh, tickets as a um, um, user's motivation to uh, release this feature while he's presenting his idea. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, that would be a great, in fact, great thing to put in the slides saying, hey, here's here are some of the reasons why we did this feature instead of here's a list of five other things. The, the amount of flexibility it provides to the Git plugin. I think it's a clear example of that. Yeah, very good. Because it, and, and it, It, it absolutely is, and it's it's done a very nice reduction of the debt that we have in the Git plugin, where people say, I need this particularly complicated thing, and the answer is, um, we're not going to add that because it's just too narrow for the large base of large base of users that there are for the Git plugin. Pushing a tag.
good. Okay. So did we, is that sufficient there, Harshit, in terms of, of what, what, what should be next there for documentation? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. All right. So next was the GSOC meetup. And where to submit the slides uh -huh. or recorded demos, send them to, to Cara Delamarque. And she'll uh, include in the in the materials. Should I reply to the mail that I received, or should I send a separate email? Reply to the email that way. Um, and actually, if you'll do a group and a reply all, that will encourage other okay. people to do the same thing. Because. Uh, right now, I'm a little worried that people are not replying nearly enough, and Kara very much needs that to happen. We'll, this presentation will be ne next week, and we're going to start promoting it very actively this week. And any other questions on that topic? Uh, no, on no, not that one. Uh, yeah, what a little bit. I was just want to know in after in the final week of the G Shock, there will be another uh, G Shock meetup by Jenkins, or is yeah. this the first and the last? Uh, so we've we've in the past consistently uh, had. A, Two presentations, or we've had presentations. So yeah, so consistently had presentations in the middle and at the end. So does that answer your question, or were you thinking will there be three, two more presentations? No, it. Uh, this is my question. So, okay, and yeah. then DevOps World, another presentation, and that one is what's called the lightning talk. And there it's, um, I believe it's five to 10 minutes. I think it's 10 minutes. Um, Rishab, do you remember, was it 10 minutes? Yeah, the lightning talk, for, no, I think it was five minutes for me. Yeah, so let's see the request from Alyssa Tong. Didn't we just uh, have the DevOps word recently? Uh, no. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. So it'll be September 21. September, and I think, it, I don't remember the exact exact date, but it'll be in the month of September. Plenty of opportunities to discuss the project, right? Right, right. You should, you should get used to presenting actually, Harshit, because you're going to you're going to be doing several presentations, and that's part of the part of the actually part of the skill development here. And it's a it's a great thing. You're presenting to uh, large groups of people who are very interested in your work. Mm, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Okay, so. Any anything else there? Uh, well, yeah, I have uh, one a little doubt that I have uh, asked in the previous meeting as well uh, regarding the test case for Git authentication 
commands do we have to write a test case for git or git authentication commands i oh good good question okay so let's take that as a separate test cases uh tests do we need an automated test of authenticated operations right uh, current automation checks the um, variables are set does not check end-to-end -end operation right mm, yeah and my my sense is Mark's preference for now is no, because we've done good interactive testing and the infrastructure to maintain um, automated tests of authenticated operations is expensive and prone to, is brittle and expensive and when i say expensive i just mean it's it tends to break it tends to waste time as we try to maintain it and doesn't uh, tell us all the things that interactive testing tells us so we continue to rely on periodic interactive testing. Now that may be that may be an uncomfortable thing to say, but um, I've got a, a significant interactive test setup that I'm using now and it, it will continue to be used and run and checked on new releases of the plugin. Now, Harshit, that doesn't stop us eventually from doing this, but I would much rather we shift and have you be able to focus on the SSH work, on the private key work, than worry about adding these auto authenticated operation tests. Mm, okay. Well, I made I made few commits yesterday that were regarding the automated tests, and the coverage report is ninety percent plus excellent well and, and i loved i love the additions you made additions added if added for uh declarative if i remember right declarative pipeline and possibly also for scripted i know i saw at least one test and possibly two uh that was included in the automated tests for pipeline so that was brilliant thank you very much All right, so anything else on automated tests? Um, no. Okay. All right, so I had wanted to talk through some of the things I'd seen in my interactive testing. I think I've made notes on them in inside the pull request. Let's go there and take a look at it. Uh, no, maybe I didn't. Okay, this transient is resolved. Okay, and that one is resolved. Huh, okay, I must not have... I must not have made my notes. Sorry about that. So let me give an overview of what I've got. And here are the tests that let's 
So what I what I started with was a series of tests to check several different providers. So GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and those three providers I've checked on Windows, um, both PowerShell and batch files. Uh, and with pipelines. So here's a pipeline test and it's well, well behaved. It's just doing a git pull, if I remember right, inside the, here we go. Yeah, so it does, it does nothing outside of with credentials and performs the entire clone, pull, et cetera, inside and it's working. Likewise for GitLab. Oh, Bitbucket's failing. Why is Bitbucket failing? Oh, right, huh. Okay, this is a fun one. Bitbucket is failing on the S390 agent because it can't resolve a host name. And I checked and there's something wrong with the host name resolution on that on that machine. So let's build it now. It will skip S390. There we go. This time it built, oh, no, it built on S390 and it's been fixed. Great, so mainframe works. And this one was on Windows using the with credentials. This one on Windows using a batch file. So this one was using PowerShell. This one uses a batch. So that part felt really good. And then, then I've also got a bunch of test cases that are run in different environments using a, a uh, pipeline. So here's a pipeline definition with, uh, a okay, here's a freestyle job using it another freestyle job using a batch file. And then now here is a parameterized pipeline with the credentials binding, parameterized. All of them I've checked recently are working. Oh, and that one has shown a failure where? Oh, again, system 390, that's built now. So, so good coverage. Now, what one of the gaps for me was I was allowed to provide a credential ID without a Git tool name. And the job fails consistently. And in pipeline, uh, arguments, named arguments are usually considered are typically considered optional, I think. Now, I, I may be wrong on that one. So that one surprised me. And then I was allowed to provide provide a non-existing git tool name and the job fails consistently as well if I remember right. Then I was allowed to, to provide a, so, oh right, and then the freestyle job, git tool name and the syntax generator use a text field rather than drop down list. And that was that was a surprise for me. I was expecting a drop down list to make sure I would choose one of the known valid git tools.
any any questions there or I think I think even with those limitations we'd still be ready to ready to deliver ready to ship it and just warn people that hey you need to provide a valid git tool name and if not you've got to you, the job may fail I, I have an observation which I did not. So <clears throat> I did not uh, imagine that there would be a trade-off of um, uh, of a potential. Uh, so we will lose some people. We will fail some jobs where people uh, are not aware, where the users are not aware of the Git tool. And earlier when we were uh, resolving the Git tool ourselves, or at least trying to do that, we uh, those cases would have worked. Uh, let's say I don't know the Git tool uh, name, and uh, internally it resolves to be the default installation that would be a valid uh, use case. But in this case, uh, when we have made the uh, argument mandatory, uh, then it, it it blocks those users, right? Correct. So so if we if we look at the pipeline syntax generator, let's let's go there and we can look at that to see how it how it feels to the user. So the user does with credentials, they select get username and password, they enter some value here, and I still can't explain why this doesn't show any of my credentials. And there is the get tool name default, and they pick generate. And this is valid syntax and absolutely will work for them. Now, if they put in here, no, no text, or if they put in here, not a valid Git tool, it will generate that, but when they use that, it will fail even if they put in a valid credentials ID, this not a valid Git tool will cause the job to fail rather than falling back and using the default. And I don't know in that case if we should fall back and use the default, but, and there isn't a way from the syntax generator any longer to generate something that does not have a Git tool name value, even if it's the empty string. So uh, then my question is that uh, why not um, fail even if the uh, user is giving us a wrong choice? What is the harm in provide in trying to attempt to use the default installation? If it's oh. going to fail, it's going to fail. But um, at least if the user, let's say by mistake or without the required context um, added uh, the wrong tool, and uh, if the default installation is available, those cases we would we would still achieve uh, a better, um, I would say, broader. Uh, we would uh, maybe uh, you know not miss those cases. Good question, Harshit. What what's your experience been there? So, Harshit, did you get hear the question? I think Harshit is on mute. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't see that. So, yeah, I heard the Rishabh's question. And um, I was saying the question is related to the resolve Git tool. It's like it has nothing to do with the code I have developed. So if we provide an empty text, an empty input or empty string, the it's the the responsibility of the resolve git tool method to check it. I mean, I'm just providing the name. Everything has to be handled by the resolve git tool. Uh, before we were using then, the, that was my code that was 
using that was you know taking the responsibility of finding an appropriate tool okay so so but but even so doesn't when when we when you call resolve git tool it's giving back a response right and that response uh i assume if it's so here yes. we've got whoops here we've got the call to resolve git tool it's a blank if, or it's a null i think it will give us the default installation Oh, oh, you're thinking it that this call will resolve to something. And yet I'm definitely seeing cases where, well, let's let me double check, but I'm pretty sure that if I modify a pipeline definition, let's replay this pipeline. So here we've got the with credentials call. And if I remove this git tool name, or let's make it non-existent tool. And when I, my recollection is when I run this, it will fail. Yeah, there it is. Fatal could not read username. So Uh, I'm sorry, I actually missed that. So, what did you uh, put for the uh, uh, for the Git tool name? Uh, here, let's look at it. It shows I put in the Git tool name. Oh, okay. Non-existent tool. So there's there's one. So now let's try it with. And I assume that was was calling into where did it go? Calling into the source code here, and that this was likely returning null uh, and then that was causing this to return null uh, but I, I don't know for sure i haven't run it in the debugger to be sure and i under to, to confirm that no mark i i, I uh, think that would be the yeah Hashi, go on. yeah i think that it should return default git tool or the controller or the agent they are running on hmm okay yeah, it should never return null actually. Oh, but um, Harshit, if if the if the git tool name is something which does not exist, uh, then it's going yeah, to resolve then, it as a null. Right? No, there is a it is there is a case that handles that, which uh, falls back to default implementation. Mark, if you could open the resolve git tool implementation, then sure, you bet. Okay, so here is git utils. Okay, and here is the resolve git tool implementation. So yeah, in the if the first condition if git is equal equal to null. Well, but but the, but the git not, tool that I passed in is non null, right? So I definitely yeah. passed in a non null. So it will it will try to find one with my non-existing name and that would be null. And then it does a get of the default installation. Okay, so so it should have returned the default installation. Huh, interesting. Okay, so okay. I think this is a Mark needs to investigate further because that surprises me. I would have expected Mark check why no why an invalid git tool is not using the default or if it is why it's not working. Mark, you can see the build messages if there's a message saying select git installation does not exist using default. Oh yes, good check. Right. We should be able to see that, shouldn't we? 
Very good. So let's look at the console output. There it is. Yes. But then it says JGit and JGit. Okay. And I don't understand that second message there. If it means the right. git tool that okay so it means that the git tool is not of type git or you can say it's of type git j git or j git apache so that's why it's not working but but that is surprising right because the invalid tool type that i gave was certainly not j git and not j git apache it was it was something that's none of the above yeah, but the default in installation of the Git tool that your control or the agent you're running on have is of type JGit and JGit Apache. So that's why. It's okay, failing. and now that part surprises me. So that's where what you're saying is because I thought, oh, it was the wrong one, global tool configuration, just a minute. I think I have the first preference is Git, not JGit. In fact, JGit and JGit Apache are the very last in my list. But what what you're saying is it's choosing, oops, it is choosing JGit. Where'd it go? Okay, someplace around here. There. For whatever reason here, it is choosing JGit or 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 thinks that the invalid thing I did is a JGit or a JGit Apache. Hmm. But then why would it do so if um, if it's using the default installation with an environment where the installations have the CLI Git tool installed? Yeah. Okay. So understand why when. Okay. So why that message? when an invalid tool is selected, invalid tool name is given. Good, okay. At least I understand what I need to investigate, great. Okay. So I think at least I, we've got an open item here to investigate, but I don't think seems to default to return a JGit or JGit Apache tool type rather than a CLI tool type. And that's a little surprising, but but that may just be the I know that there were some odd behaviors in the Git plugin where it was defaulting to return JGit. So that may be the same thing. It needs more investigation, but I don't think that blocks us from shipping the code. So Harshit, are you or Rishab, are you okay with how it's been described so far and we'll do more investigation to understand it? Yes, 100%, Mark. I think uh, my concern that um, a user providing providing a wrong tool name, uh, I think is addressed because we would uh, return back the default installation in that case, the resolve git tool would do that. So Harshad is right that um, we will cover that case. Okay. Yep, good. All right, so we've got this one to investigate still. Great, okay. Next, uh, anything else on that topic before we touch this next one? I just have a small question if if we have the time. Uh, uh, I just want to ask that, um, Harshit, you're trying to check if um, if the if the installation type equals git tool dot class or not. Yeah. And you're doing that to, uh, why are you doing that? Are we not, is that not guaranteed by the resolve git tool? That we no. get? Okay. T 
So I need to look at the code. Yeah, so I just want to ask then why, why, uh, what is the reason for placing this check? Uh, this ensure that only Git specific, or you can say a CLI Git specific Git tool goes to the <clears throat> to the binding and performs the operation, and uh, uh, any other type like JGit or JGit. Apache does not. Yeah, but I, as far as I I know, the Git tool is is the class which is implemented by the other tools, right? Yeah. Okay. So if J no, you're right. It's a... extends Git tool. Yeah. Then how are we? Um, uh, sure. Mark, I guess, I uh, mean, no, okay, okay, that's fine. No, there, there's a line saying, see, in that type specific Git tool. So here on line 38, we are ensuring that the class is there. It reveals the Git installation reveals its class. So using that, this, so get installation and Yeah. My question, my question is that if we are checking if it's of type Git tool and JGit tool and JGit Apache tool extend Git tool, then what are we going to get there? Yeah. The line third line the yeah the code on the line thirty eight deals with the, this case only. So it will. <coughs> so if we <coughs> sorry, if we look at the git tool name specific git tool object then the and if we look at the class it will show us git tool dot class but if we perform this the code on the line 38 and search for the git tool with the name specific with the name specified then the class is revealed so it will tell us which class it the git tool is from it is from jgit tool or jgit apache or it is from git tool so after Revealing the class, then I'm performing the check. I'll, I'll, I'll probably um, I just look more into the, the tool, tool ones. I, I I understand what you're saying, uh, Harshit. I just need to look at the code ones. Yeah. So I think I think your question is there, right? And so let's let's capture that just to be sure, right? So. Do we need the check for exact class match in that? I mean, yeah, we do need that because if we look at the where and we are setting the if we are checking the version of the git then we have to ensure that the git implementation is cli git and not jgit or jgit apache and we and have to by checking yeah. for git tool dot class that tells us it's cli git not jgit or jgit apache that yeah, surprises me, me. I, Exactly, that is what I'm confused about. But, but actually, this is a great one for us to just, we can, we can use a debugger because this code, I believe, is executed inside the automated tests and the automated tests pass in JGit, pass in JGit Apache and CLI Git, so we can just watch it execute. So that's, okay. that's something that's pretty easy to check with a debugger to see, okay, is is this condition ever false? I like to do that. I have, I, do that created, I have created a separate test case also for this thing to check this 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 method. Get CLI get tool. But you can check well, that also. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll actually review the whole thing. 
Okay, so the separate test was, should be, okay, so we've got here, basic setup, this one, no, that just clears the tool instance. Okay, then freestyle, pipeline, there we go. Is this the test you're referencing? Yes. Good. So we've we've got automated test cases we can use to check it. Yeah, I'll go through them once. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, we've, we've hit our hour. I've, I wanted to double check on one more topic. Could both of you spend another five minutes on, on this before we end? Um, yeah. Okay. There was one code review uh, open question. It was related to the Git client plugin choice of the uh, API name in the in the proposed change here. So the proposal was, let's add a new method, is CLI get ver at least? And a question, and, and it's got tests, very, very good. Uh, the question from me and then also from, I think Justin and Rishab had the same question. Why not just expose the existing method, make it public? Any insights you want to offer there, Harshit? I mean, I just developed the Dapper method for that. I'm, I mean, I could create it public. So I just want to create a Dapper method for that purpose only. No, but um, I, my concern was just, not a concern, just an observation that uh, if we are exposing it, via a wrapper then essentially it renders that protection package protection useless right it, it it is public because we're not doing like we're not placing any additional check or um, any logic which so essentially well, just one thing it. that yeah yeah well, one thing that i was a bit concerned was in the future, if we need any implementation change, then we could use this method instead of making everything in that, in the at least version. So we have the wrapper method and we could modify it according to our need, or we can create another one as well, but. That's a great, I think that's a great point, yes. So you're saying that this could be used particularly for the logic of the, um, the git binding, right? Yeah, it's a for now it's, it is being using, it's being used for the Git binding, binding only, but in the future we know, we don't know where it might be used. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Good. Yeah. And, and I have I have no objections at all to just going with this as it is and delivering a version of the client plugin that includes this. So so for me, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's the same for me, Mark. As well. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and and I think I'm going to add these closing punctuation into it just that way i don't have to deal with risks from javadoc complaining about sentences that aren't ended and javadoc is a little bit finicky so still approved and now i'm going to go ahead and take advantage of i think you've still allowed me permission to commit to this one add to the batch add to the batch Commit the suggestions, add punctuation, 
Java Doc. And then when this completes, I think we're ready to go ahead and release this. Uh, I'll actually increment the version number, Harsha, just for your info, I believe to 3.8.0, just because it's adding a new API. And that way, this is a way to dis declare that it's a oh, fromatting shame on me. Okay, good. All right, that was the uh, API name in Git client plugin, question resolved. Great, that was what I needed. Uh, so next steps then, uh, mark to merge, merge and release, Oof. and release Git client. And then Harshit, you will update the pull request to use the new release. And then we're, I think we're ready to review one more time, prepare to release. Any objections to a release of username and password? No, I don't. I don't see any. I don't see anything. Because I, I've still got questions in the debugger that I need to. I want to be sure I understand that. Yeah, it's the same for me. It's around the Git tool resolution. I, I just have to check, but I think right. that's my investigation. All right, Harshit, thanks very much. Now we're scheduled. I think our next session is is scheduled for later this week, right? Yeah. All right, great. Thanks, everybody. I'll make the recording available later. Any other topics before we end for the day? No, I don't have a topic, but I just want to know, Mark, how you are running agents on your in Jenkins instance. You are using SSH for that? Uh, I use a wide range of, of choices. So here I can talk to you about that as well. So for example, this agent uses SSH. This agent oh, uses okay. inbound, not SSH, so it uses an inbound connection. Uh, this agent uses what's called the Jenkins swarm as a technique of connecting. And most of the other agents use SSH. So I, I have a, a, a wide variety of connection. I have an intentional variety of connection types. I am not using any Kubernetes and I'm not using any WebSocket at this point. So there are still some connection types that I'm not testing here, but I've, I'm intentionally testing a variation of different connection types to be sure that they're all well behaved. Okay. Good, good question. Very good. I'm glad glad somebody else thinks about how are those agents connected and could they be doing something different in one connection than another. Well done, Harshit. All right. Anything else? Mm. No, nothing from my side. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you on Friday. Okay.